So I think we've got time for just one more quick example of how to use the central limit theorem. So we'll look at this uh, simple game. Let's suppose that this game involves uh, spinning a spinner and it points to an amount between 0 cents and 99.99999 cents um, and you get x cents back wherever the spinner points. So clearly the, the random variable x, which is where the spinner points, is uniform on 0, 1. Now if this game costs you 51 cents to play, the question is this, after 25 games, what's the probability that you're ahead? That is, that you've won more than it costs to play. So there's a couple ways you could think about this, um, and it's a reasonably straightforward question to solve using the central limit theorem. Once you've figured out how to, how to phrase it as a question involving either a total or an average, because that's what the central limit theorem does. So we could think of this in terms of an average. x bar would be the amount you win on the first game plus the second plus up to the amount you win on the 25th game over 25. And you'll be ahead if this average is more than the cost per game, which is 51 cents. So we want to calculate the probability that x bar, the average of these 25 random outcomes, exceeds 0.51. So this is clearly a statement about a sum of random variables, in particular an average of 25 random variables. They're all independent and identically distributed. That is, one spin doesn't affect the next. The amount you win each time has the same distribution. So we have to turn to the central limit theorem and figure out what the expected value uh, and variance is of x bar. So we need the expected value of x1 and we need its variance. I guess it's pretty obvious that the expected value of x1 is going to be a half, or 50 cents, because if it's uniform on 0, 1, a half is the average. Now, to calculate the variance, you may not remember how to do this, but it's a good review of how to do this kind of problem. So the, remember, the one way we can calculate the variance of a random variable, x, would be the expected value of its square minus the square of the expected value. And we have this, we know this is a half, so we need to figure out this other part here. To calculate the expected value of x squared, since this is a continuous random variable, we want it to be the integral or the real line, although we'll simplify that to an integral between 0 and 1, because that's the range for which the probability density function is positive the integral of x squared, and in this case my f of x is just the number 1 on that interval, dx. Because a, a uniform 0, 1, uh, the PDF will have height 1. So this is an easy integral to do. It's x cubed divided by 3 evaluated at 0 and 1, which is a third. So that means that the variance of x will be a third minus one-half the expected value of x squared, which is a third minus a quarter, which is one-twelfth. Or we could write that as 0.289, or 289, 0.289 squared. That is, if you take 1 over the square root of 12, you get 0.289. So this is the standard deviation of x of one of these. So uh, to use this in the central limit theorem, we know that mu equals 0 0.5 and sigma equals 0.289. And so the central limit theorem tells us how x is going to behave. It says that x will be x bar will be normal with expected value mu and variance 0.289 uh, squared over n. And here n equals 25. I'm going to play 25 games. So uh, we want to figure out the probability that x bar exceeds uh, 0.51. That would be the average cost per game. And so that's the same as saying the probability that x bar minus a half over 0.289 over 5. Uh, that's 
sigma over root n, n is 25, exceeds 0.51 minus 0.5 over 0.289 over 5. That's the same as saying the probability that a standard normal is bigger than 0.01 over 0.0577, or the same as the probability that a standard normal is bigger than 0.1732, which we can look up in R. We can say that that's uh, 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0.1732, which equals 1 minus p norm of 0.1732, which works out to be about 43%. So there's a 43% chance that you'll be ahead of the game after playing this game that many times. Incidentally, we could calculate this exactly in R almost as easily um, by simulation. So for example, if we do the following commands, so this first command here uh, generates uh, a whole bunch of uh, 10,000 different samples of size 25 from a uniform distribution and just stores them in a matrix. So this is going to be a, a matrix with uh, 10,000 rows and 25 columns. And what we're going to do is we calculate the averages. So we could say, for example, x bar equals apply to x1 mean. So that'll calculate 25,000 averages. Actually, I should say that'll calculate 10,000 averages. And then we could count how many times, uh, or what percentage of times, x bar is bigger than uh, 51 cents. So we could count um, the mean of x bar greater than 0 0.51. And when we do this in R, we get 0 0.4319. So what this is doing is this part here is 1 if x bar is greater than 0.51 and 0 otherwise. So we're going to get a vector of 10,000 zeros and ones, and the average of those zeros and ones will be the percentage of times this happens. And you'll notice that that's basically the same as what we got using the central limit theorem which is reassuring because it means we got the right answer. So in any case, this is another example of how you can use the central limit theorem. Uh, the key thing here, again, is when you're given the initial problem, you have to figure out how to relate this to a statement involving a total or an average. And usually there's equivalent ways to do both. In this case, we related it to a statement about a sample average of 25 values. Then we had to work out what the expected value and variance of the individual random variables involved was, and then transfer things into a standard normal and look something up in the probability table. So that's another example of how you can use the central limit theorem. And I think we'll stop there.